So now let's now talk about the second version. The second version goes like this. You can think about the second version is basically identical to the first one, except that we're going to delete the else keyword over here. The consequence of that is simply going to be, this is going to be an independence if statement. This is going to be an independence, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, and also in the, uh, independent one. We got multiple if statement. So that's exactly the second version we have over here. And we still have the branching condition over here. Agree? So now let's try this right away. You already know why these conditions over here are simply overlapping. So one possible test question for you later or test or exam, if we simply just give you a range expression, like uh, for example, larger than or equal to 90, larger than equal to 80, simply ask you whether these uh, conditions are overlapping, you will know how to answer, right? The best way to argue would be to visualize them, all right? So let's see now why we are still using the same branching conditions over here that are actually overlapping, exactly the same set of uh, uh, branching conditions. But now, the fact that we don't have else if, else if, we don't have that. We simply got if, if, and if. And I already explained that we got nine uh, independent if statement. So now, what's gonna happen? Four, is this correct? I can tell you the conclusion is gonna be incorrect, but I gotta know why. And then I'll give you the lesson uh, in just a moment. So what we're gonna do is we're going to trace this again. Let's try 63 over here, right? And we know that 63 is just around over here. 63, all right? Very quickly, the branching condition over here for the first if statement, 63 larger than or equal to 90 is actually false. So we're gonna bypass. And then we are now done with the very first if statement, we are done. And then we go ahead because of sequential execution, we're going to execute a second if statement. The reason that we go from here to here is because we simply go for sequential composition, uh, sequential execution. And the reason that we go from here to here over here simply because it's actually the same uh, if statement. So we gotta go from one branching condition to another if the previous one fails for different reason, all right? And then this one here also is going to fail, right? 63 larger than or equal to 80 is also uh, false, also fail. And this one also will be false, right? This one also be false. 63 larger than or equal to 75, also false, all right? So we're just going to fail also this one here, 63 larger than or equal to 70, also fail, bypass, right? And then this will also be failing, okay? So gonna also bypass. This will be the first one that's going to evaluate to true. 63 larger than or equal to 60, right? So let's just keep track. You can see so far our LG over here initialized to be empty string, all right? And now let me use a different color. Since this will be the first one that's going to be satisfied. So now if I try 63 larger than, oh, sorry, not this one here. Let me do it undo. What I meant was this one here, 63 larger than or equal to 60 is going to be true. That means I'm going to execute the body over here, which is going to override it to be C. So far, the behavior is really the same as the uh, first version over here, so far, all right? So now, are we going to do this one as well? The answer is yes, because this one over here is really important for you to see. This one over here versus this one over here, for example, these are different, distinct if statement, distincts, or simply independence. Independence uh, if statements, just multiple. Meaning that uh, executing already this has nothing to do with whether you should uh, uh, should not affect uh, should not affect the fact that you want to execute the other one. All right, so now we're still going to execute this one. So 63 larger than or equal to 55, also true. So that means we're also going to execute this, and we're also going to reassign that to be D plus. That means this will be reassigned to D plus. Now you can already see why this version over here is actually wrong even though we are using the same set of uh, uh, branching conditions. Let's uh, complete this. Let's try another one. Uh, we're also going to evaluate this because it's, a, again, a different if statements. 
So now 63 larger than or equal to 50 is also true. And then we're also going to execute this. That one is going to uh, change this to be D. All right. And then finally, you can see there's another if statement over here. But now 63 less than 50 is going to be false. So we don't really override it to be uh, letter grade F. So, so but eventually what we'll get is it's going to be a letter grade D. So this is incorrect. All right. On the paper, hopefully you can see why. Even though having the same uh, set of overlapping conditions over here in between version one and version two, however, in version number one, having a single if statement is actually okay because a particular way that we try to execute it. However, if you got multiple independent if statements, it's not going to be okay. So that's something I would like to show you. Right? The lesson is whatever if you got multiple. If statement over here, you got to be very careful because each one of them is going to be executed independently. So you want to make sure if you really got overlapping conditions among them, is uh, you should know what the expected behavior would be, and then if that's really what you want. All right. Let me uh show you very quickly on the Eclipse about the second version over here. Okay. Let me switch back to Eclipse, and then let me just uh we can stop the uh, J units from the previous session over here. And then we'll just uh, let me go back to test grade over here. I just want to write a new test over here. And then I can copy that. And then like that. And then I'll say test grade two over here, right? And then uh, let me just say test one and test two. Of course, you can make it more informative. You can say test grade one, test grade two, you know. And let me just remove the breakpoint just for avoid, conf uh, excuse me, to avoid confusion over here. Let me run this test to begin with to make sure that one is not actually not going to pass, right? To make sure that's really incorrect. What I can do is I can simply rerun the JUnit test. I can simply click on that. You can see that one is at, oh, actually, you know, what? Oh, one thing uh, a little bit tricky about JUnit test. If the current focus of your cursor is on a particular test over here, you can see if I rerun the JUnit test, it's going to show just that particular test. If you want to run all of them at one go, you have to move the cursor focus outside of any of the tests like this. You, uh, simply move that to line number 10, right? And now if I rerun again, you can see one pass and the other one fell. And the one fell over here, you can see we got expected and, uh, and also actual. Double click on this, you will see expecting C, but we're getting D. So D is exactly what I predicted on the paper, right? That's wrong, all right? Let's see very quickly about how we can trace this using debugger. So what I will do is I'm going to put a breakpoint over here, line number 19, and then I'm just going to debug over here, right? Debug test grade. And then switch to debug perspective over here. And then uh, what I will do is I'm going to switch, I'm going to step into uh, the execution for the grade number two uh, method. And then I will say step into over here, right? So now you can see this is the uh, uh, overlapping condition, but you can see we got one if statement here, second if statement here, and etc. Right? So now you pretty much know the branching condition. So let's not waste time. Let me just go directly to the point about illustrating this. So if I say step over over here, this branching condition is going to be false. So I'll skip, uh, jump to line number 44. All right. So then you can see this is one if statement. This is just another if statement, just independence. And this will this branching condition will still be false. So I'll jump to line number forty-seven. Still false. Jump to line number fifty. Right. Pretty, uh, pretty much what I did on the iPad. Right. And then I'm gonna jump into line number fifty-three. Jump into line number fifty-six. And oh, actually, I did a bit too fast. When I jump to fifty-six, I am supposed to pause and then say step over. But I already click on step over. But you can see that this will be the very first branching condition that's actually true. So that's why we're going to execute this. At the moment, we have not actually executed line number 57 just yet, right? But if I say step over again, you can see now it has been overwritten to C. You can see the difference is uh, in the version number one, this used to be like an else if. In that case, the else if was just be bypassed. But now since it's only a single if over here, so that's independence. So we are still going to execute this. And we know that this branching condition here, for example, you can see larger than or equal to 55 is actually true. So if I say step over, I'm going to by uh, going to uh, go to line number 60 and execute this. And you can see currently it's the right answer C, 
However, as soon as I say step over, it's going to override it to D plus. Okay, and then, so now if I say Marx, which is uh, 63, 63 larger than or equal to 50 is true. So I'm going to go into uh, step over. I'm also going to execute this to, re to reassign it to D. If I say step over again, so that'll be the final answer that's going to be returned, which is false, which is incorrect. All right, you can see 63 less than 50 is actually false. So I don't really go into it. So this will be bypassed. So after this, I'll just go all the way to, if I say step over, go all the way to the return LG over here. Okay. All right, so hopefully so far it makes sense to you. I really try to be thorough about tracing the code together with you both on the paper and also on the Eclipse debugger. You need both technique for uh, completing your programming and also written tests. It's really important. All right.